The ECB delivered a 25 basis point rate cut early June, and question now is when the next cut will follow. ECB President Christine Lagarde has been very clear that this will be very much dependent on the incoming data, and this means that markets will be closely monitoring each report for clues. To our minds, the most likely timing for the next rate cut is September. The euro area economy is currently enjoying a disinflation bounce, as witnessed by the better first quarter growth numbers. And this will leave the ECB confident that it has some time on its hands. Moreover, with the wage dynamics still running strong due to past inflation, the ECB is still concerned about potential spillovers. The hurdle to a July rate cut is thus high, but should the economy slow at a much faster pace than we expect, the door to this possibility could again open. Overall, we look for 75 basis points more rate cuts before year end. This will, however, still leave monetary policy in restrictive territory, and this at a time when fiscal policy is also tightening. Overall, we thus expect to see sluggish growth for the euro area in both 2024 and 2025. The challenge now for the new incoming Commission and European Parliament is to enhance the competitiveness of the region and secure a stronger growth model in a world increasingly shaped by fragmentation. The exceptional resilience of the US economy has in recent months lost some steam, with consumers growing more cautious and corporates trimming back hiring plans. The challenge for the Fed, however, is that inflation is proving sticky on the last stretch of returning it to target. And although special factors, and notably auto insurance, have weighed in, the Fed clearly prefers to err on the side of caution. With the momentum of the economy now slowing, we expect the Fed to deliver a first-rate cut this autumn and look for a total of 75 basis points in 2024. The outlook beyond, however, is marked by uncertainty with the November elections having a key say for the future path of both domestic and international politics of the U.S. The Chinese government have recently adopted a number of measures aimed at boosting the domestic economy in the face of the ongoing headwinds from the real estate deleveraging. Measures aimed at upgrading machinery, equipment and appliances should offer some support, but we nonetheless expect households to retain high precautionary savings. A key concern remains that China will look to export excess capacity and the risk is that this will trigger further tariff measures by China's key trading partners. On a more general note, geopolitical tensions and fragmentation are likely to remain a structural headwind for the global economy, at least for the foreseeable future. Moreover, the risk is that this fragmentation will delay urgent action needed to fight climate change. <music>